And like I mentioned, this is like a full package in itself where you start from the starting basics of web, cover all the way to production, apply for jobs or internships. I don't know, like whatever you want. And uh, yep, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a full package in itself for you to explore and start your career in web development. Hi everyone, I'm Ishan Sharma. So a lot of you might be curious about full stack web development and you might want to know about how to learn web development effectively, how to start, what technology do you need to get and how can you find opportunities in the field as a man stack developer or as a full stack developer in general. So this video is going to be about exactly that. I am joined with a pro full stack developer, Mehul Mohan, the founder of Codam, and he'll be talking about how can you start this process of learning full stack development. We'll be covering everything that you need to know about web development particularly. I hope you'll enjoy. Hit the like button and subscribe and let's get into this video and talk with Mehul about full stack development. Hi Mehul, how are you doing there? I'm doing good. Thank you so much Ashan for having me again on your channel. Amazing bro. How has your journey been like as a full stack developer? How did you start? So my journey has been I think a long one. Um, I did not start in college where most people start learning programming and development and things. I started way back when I was in class 6th and 7th and that was purely out of interest. I did not intend to be a full stack developer. I did not intend to get into coding that much but it was a natural consequence of I needed to learn these things in order to do what I wanted to do. So my journey started way back in school and it has still been continuing. I mean I learn new things all the time, all days. 365 days a year. Awesome, bro. A big question people have is, should they be going with web development or should they choose Android development? What do you think about it and why did you pick web development particularly? And what is the scope of web development in the coming few years? That's a fair question and believe a lot of people who are coming into programming field have this question whether they should go for mobile application or website development or web development. For me, I actually worked with Android development a bit, iOS development as well, but eventually figured out that web development is my field of work because web development usually has a shorter cycle of seeing the changes you are doing on production as well. With Android and iOS, a lot of times you have to go through these app stores. So you don't really control the end to end deployment of the things you are doing in a way. Plus, Android development and iOS development usually requires you to have an external device with you for optimum development, which in a lot of cases is not possible, especially if you are if you have a low end computer, let's say, or you have a, a laptop which does not cannot really simulate a lot of Android devices. So I do believe web development is a great way to get started with programming, not only because it has much lower threshold to get started but also the fact that a lot of leading companies i mean every company out there has a website and you can build one too um, there is a lot of opportunity in freelance work there's a lot of opportunity for personal projects as well got it what is the average salary of a full stack web developer in india and if they go to work as a remote developer how much can they expect to get paid right now so if you google up this question obviously which a lot of people will google after hearing my response then you will find vague ranges anywhere between 2 to 3 lakhs in india all the way up to 19 20 21 lakhs and that is a fair range but it depends a lot on what type of company you're applying i can give you real world examples of startups and companies which are recently funded well funded and for example at Codam, we do not have any developer who's paid less than 16 lakh ctc per year so that's that's one stat i know companies i know founders who are paying even more 18 20 22 lakhs just for the back-end development itself not even full stack so there is definitely demand for you if you are a good developer even in india there is demand for you because the capital is so much there is a lot of money with these startups and companies so money is not the factor the factor now is that how talented you are and how much value do you bring on the table for these startups for these companies if you're a good enough developer i mean it's it's way easy in today's time to get a programming job which is you know above 10 12 14 lpa as well if we talk about us salaries or remote salaries if we consider that you will see the range over there is well around one hundred thousand dollars per year and goes up to 150 200 as well depending on how talented you are and this is this can be achieved just in the front end or back end roles as well separately you do not need to be a fully blown full stack developer 
to get these salaries but it's just that if you are really good enough with your skill sets if you really know what you're doing there's a lot of money to be made in this area as a developer that's actually a nice salary for someone who's just getting out of college my next question to you would be what is the right approach to learning web development both front end and back end development included i do feel that there is no one concrete right path which you can take and be guaranteed that you will become a good developer but there are obviously some general tips and tricks and things you should keep in mind when you are starting your journey the first thing i believe is not doing a lot of things simultaneously you will see some people who are trying out web development and data science and machine learning and android app development and this and that and they are learning all of these technologies together that's that's a sure shot way of failing at each one of them in a beautiful way you will you will not be able to do web development and android and data science and ml and all this stuff together because they are vastly different fields they require different mindsets to work with they def- require different technologies to work with and so on so one thing is that you should if you are trying to pick up web development you should only focus on that and that is also if you are not an experienced developer if you are just starting out with things i usually would not recommend you to go with back end development right away because it's a little bit it's it's not harder to pick up it's just that with front end you have much shorter cycles of seeing and applying what you are learning so html you can learn probably in a day or two right and just start building basic pages but with back ends for building a application which supports databases and logic and all that stuff that might take you a few weeks time and you would anyway need to develop a front end to interact with it right you won't want to interact with the cli interface right so i do feel that a generic tip for someone who's just getting started with web development and wants to become a full stack developer is that focus on only full stack when you're doing it no more ml no more this and that for some time until and unless you figure out that this is your gig and you want to do it once you figure that out go ahead and start with front end web development that's a good way to start a uh, good way to get into industry then once you are comfortable with front end you can parallelly learn front end and back end simultaneously right you are comfortable with html css javascript maybe a little bit of react then you switch to back end maybe you pick up node js mongo db you pick up a few simple apps and then you parallelly build both front end and back end and that's how you learn how to interact with these those those two systems and how those two systems but the back end and the front end interact with themselves debugging you know taking a look at what happens under the hood understanding the internals that is that is something you want to do and that is something that is one of the places you want to be as a developer when you are learning these things and this will only come when you are focused a lot on full stack or focused a lot on a single thing and not just mixing with a lot of things parallelly may you all give me a road map a list of things that i need to learn if i want to become a full stack developer what is like a step by step thing that i can follow to learn about full stack development that's a that's a good question and the way at least i think about it now um if i were to relearn what i have learned so far in the last 7 8 years around full stack web development i would start with the very basics of web fundamentals what is web how http works what is dns how you know when i type google.com or codeband.com and it hit enter what happens in the browser itself i'll start with there a little bit of under- understanding and introduction around that just to give me a base on which to build the information and the knowledge for front end then of course i'll shift to html and css like we discussed these are two building blocks of front end web development html css and javascript these three technologies play really well together for building beautiful and interactive pages online and once you start working with them obviously you will run into bugs and problems and errors all the time you need to know ways to debug and you know just get yourself unblocked quickly and for that you would need a debugger which for front end the best thing out there is chrome dev tools or firefox dev tools or what any kind of browser dev tools which you are using so that should be the next thing i would learn then i mean if we continue with the flow of learning the next thing you would have is once you have a little bit of project mini project ready for you which you have developed yourself you would ideally want to deploy it somewhere on the internet for other people to see it and the most popular way of storing your code and deploying it online as well today is git using git and github 
or you know git and some other version control system but github is the most popular one out there so you want to learn about git and github and how to deploy your projects online next thing you would be working with is package managers for example how to install packages how to use the ecosystem of javascript properly so you would need npm and yarn for that you will move on to react the react ecosystem how to work with react properly taking a look at a framework like next.js for example which is a production ready react framework and deploying website using that once you have done this much i do believe this is a good time to also start working with backend a little bit so this is a good time to start with node.js for example and taking a look at how to build basic backends how to connect with database how to interact with the, the user input coming from the front end how to sanitize it the web security part how to build secure backends how to deploy it on a linux machine let's say on an ec2 instance or a digital ocean droplet so you would need to get comfortable a little bit with Linux as well when you're working with backends. And then finally, just wrap it up with a few or, you know, a lot of <laughs> blog posts from experienced people and production level practices and videos and seeing how things actually work in production environments. Because there's a there's a huge difference between what you do on a local system versus how things are deployed on a production environment. So you want to understand how things work at scale, how things works in in big companies or you know how projects are deployed in a maybe like in a serverless fashion which scales to a lot of people or even in a server full way how to load balance things properly so a little bit of devops by the end of the full stack but not so much because full stack in itself is programming devops and cloud gets a little bit into infrastructure part but i believe that should be a good journey for you to you know, just just cover the basic and most required things without adding up a lot of additional garbage stuff all the way, which is which is you don't need at the moment. Right. How can people learn about web development particularly, right? Like what are the resources that they can use to learn about this in an effective manner so that they know that this is the right format for them to learn and this will help them build projects at the same time. What can they do in this case? So the things which we discussed in the last question, they actually come from the CodeDamps learning path itself, which is a full stack web developer learning path, which organizes all these resources into modules starting from basics of web development all the way up to production level practices, covering each and every aspect which we discussed in this little video of ours. This learning path or this content over here goes into details of things you need to know and master in order to become a full stack developer. But the best part about this is not the content, it's about how many projects and practice you have along the way. Because when you take up a full stack learning path, you will have the ability to build projects and practice and run tests and evaluate your output right inside the browser. So imagine you're learning about backend web development and you are on a lesson where you have to develop a SQL based backend connected to a React frontend. You can actually evaluate your code. You can actually practice this, this, these things just like you would be asked in an interview level setting, for example, right on the code damn platform itself within your course curriculum. So it's not about learning. It's more about learning plus doing plus evaluating yourself you know building that feedback loop when you are learning that is the most important part which we are focusing on code dam and uh, by the end of the learning path if you are good enough you can also consider applying for jobs on code dam platform itself where we associate with these companies who are trying to get companies these companies and startups who are trying to get you as a good developer to build things for their companies their organizations and like i mentioned this is like a full package in itself where you start from the starting basics of web cover all the way to production apply for jobs or internships i don't know like whatever you want and uh yep i mean it's a it's a it's a full package in itself for you to explore and start your career in web development what a big doubt people have is why should they be going for paid content and paid resources if they can already consume tons and tons of videos on free code camp or other youtube channels there are tons of them available what do you think about this i think the partial answer to this question lies in your question itself why do people would go for paid resources when they can consume tons and tons of videos that's the problem you don't need tons and tons of content in order to become a good developer you need high quality resources that's number one number two is that if you consider free code camp as a platform where you can learn full stack web development you might be a little wrong they focus more on the front end part and a little bit of python they do not have full stack web development which is which involves a lot more than 
just React and HTML and CSS. It involves web security, it involves database, it involves working with front end and back end together to build bigger applications, which are much, much more mature in terms of how they operate. So all of that requires you to have a real IDE within the browser in a way which we have developed and uh, apart from that we also aim to build this as a full end-to-end -end solution for you to start from the basics and also get a job by the end or you know get an internship by the end of the learning path where we do have this internal portal of our own where companies would be able to apply you would be able to apply to those companies in a single click we build your resume we build your whole proof of work thing that you have worked this much you have completed these many projects on the website and we go to the companies we showcase them your proof of work and help you get that job or get that internship easy so we are doing we are trying to do the hard thing here we are not just giving you the resources we are giving you projects to build practice on we are giving you the infrastructure to learn on and also associate companies with you so that it's all you have to focus on is learning and becoming a better developer and you can just remove and channel out the rest of the noise from your learning journey. I think that's a really important point that people can get everything, the learning, the doing, and the opportunity at the same point. You can use my code Ishan to get a 50% discount on the Code Dams Learning Path of Full Stack Development. You can check out the link in the description for that. Mehul, thank you so much for joining me here. I hope the audience found this video valuable. And yeah, thank you so much for joining in. Thank you so much for having me, Sean. All right, have a good day. Bye-bye. So this is the complete full stack development roadmap that you need to follow. I helped you learn about all of these topics. Take a look at the link in the description to learn more about the Code Dams full stack development learning path. I hope you found this video helpful. Please share this video with your friends and tag me on social at Ishan Sharma 7390 on Instagram and Twitter. And yeah, I hope you find this valuable. I'll catch you in the next video.